Hi everyone, this is Frank with Teachly University and in this lecture today we're going to be going over how to write a novel in 30 days and I promise you that after watching this lecture you're going to have the right toolkit and information that if you uh, implement you're going to be able to write a novel in 30 days or even less depending on how motivated you are and I know writing can be very intimidating I'm an author I've written a number of books in both fiction and nonfiction so I understand the trials and tribulations when it comes to writing how difficult it can be but in fact if you can read and you can write and you love stories you can be a novelist and write a great novel and a great story and storytelling of itself is an important skill especially in this era that we live in right now where there's we live in the information age where there's so much noise and distraction the best way for you to stand out from the crowd whether you're an author whether you're an entrepreneur or a marketer uh, is being able to harness the skill of storytelling because for example if you look at TED Talks uh, the best speakers that do these TED Talks are telling stories and storytelling is a great way to convey an important message to your audience to your readers or your customers if again if you're an entrepreneur uh, storytelling is a very powerful skill that you want to really learn how to master in this new economy that we're in today so where do we begin so what you want to start is think about some of your favorite books and films that you enjoy and maybe you want to pause this video and maybe uh, jot down a list of some of your favorite books and films and think about what inspires you with these movies or how do these movies inspire you and resonate with you and the reason this is important is because you're going to use these books and films as your inspiration and the foundation for your novel that you're going to write because you're going to take bits and pieces from these different stories and books and films that you've seen and integrate it into your own story and an example of this if you look at some of the best writers and storytellers uh, and artists, uh, they take what inspires them, their favorite books, their favorite paintings, their favorite films, and they use that, there are elements from those stories and artistic works, and they implement that, integrate it into their own work. And a very good example is George Lucas. George Lucas was inspired to create Star Wars from the sci-fi serials of the 30s and 40s, as well as films like The Seven Samurai and The Magnificent Seven and other films. And if you were to watch these movies, you'd see that where Lucas got his inspiration from and how he uh, took elements from some of those films, like scene transitions, et cetera, and used those elements and put it into A New Hope. And also, he took, also obviously used Joseph Campbell's A Hero's Journey and in, uh, injected a lot of mythology into the Star Wars saga as well. So you could see that he got a lot of inspiration from a lot of different sources and integrated that into his own uh, his own story, which of course paid off very well. And you can say the same thing with J.K. Rowling, Stephen King, and other uh, storytellers and authors. They took what was out there already and took little bits and pieces, mixed it up, and made it their own. So this is exciting because it's not about reinventing the wheel. You have everything that you need and all the ideas out there to create a great story. So it's all out there for you to, for you to use. You just have to make the decision to use it. So now that we understand or have a good idea of what inspires us or maybe a faint idea of what kind of story we want to write, we want to understand story structure. Now we're going to be going over Kurt Vonnegut's story structure that he has lectured on a lot. And again, I, I recommend watching a lot of Kurt Vonnegut's lectures that they're on YouTube. He was just such an amazing writer and humorist and human being. I recommend you watch them. Uh, but Kurt Vonnegut's story structure I really like because it, it's really a great way to understand uh, how stories are shaped and how characters are developed throughout the story arc. I have the Kurt Vonnegut story structure. And I love Kurt Vonnegut's structure because I think it's very simple and straightforward and really shows us how so many of our favorite books and movies have been made. They pretty much follow, follow this kind of story arc that, that Kurt Vonnegut uh, shows here. So when we look at the top part of the axis or the G, that represents good fortune. And what that means is that the protagonist of the main character uh, you know, life is great. Everything is grand. Life couldn't be any better. And a lot of stories start off that way, as we could see here with a lot of these story arcs with this U shape, with a lot of these type of stories. You know, the, the story starts where we introduce the character, the main character who's living a good life. Everything is pretty much great. And then there's usually an inciting incident or something that happens that puts the character in a very precarious or bad situation. They put themselves, pretty much they dug themselves into a hole that they gotta get themselves out of. So then the bottom part of that access or the eye represents ill fortune. So the character's in a pretty bad place, life pretty much sucks, things aren't going well, 
And, and a very extreme example of that could be Franz Kafka's uh, Metamorphosis, where the protagonist of the main character turns into a cockroach, and then it just it just doesn't get better from there, okay? But we could see that more often than not, a lot of stories start where the main character, things are going well, and life seems to be grand, when then there's an inciting incident or something happens. And this could apply to a number of different types of stories, whether it's the man in a hole story or woman in a hole, where the character is in a really bad situation, they got to get out of it. Or boy meets girl, where the boy meets his girl, but there's some obstacle that prevents the boy from being with the girl for them to be together. And there's obstacles along the way that the boy has to get out of so that he can finally have the girl and they live happily ever after. Cinderella obviously is a little bit different, as we can see here with the green part, uh, arc, where Cinderella is a rags to riches story, where she starts off in poverty and then all of a sudden her life is transformed where, again, she goes through this arc, but ultimately she finds the prince and lives happily ever after. Now, this can also apply to underdog stories as well. Like Rocky's another very good example. Rocky starts off in that bottom part of the axis. Well, he has ill fortune. I mean, he's a club fighter. Uh, you know, he's pretty much a bum. He, no, nobody knows who he is. He's living a life of poverty and obscurity. And then all of a sudden, he's given this one in a million shot to fight the heavyweight champion of the world. And all he wants to do is just go the distance, which he does. And then, uh, of course, that led to, I don't know how many different Rocky movies, okay? But we can see here how most stories follow this type of arc or story structure where they either start off where things are going great or things are going bad, but then there's something that happens, an inciting incident where the story really begins to take off. But what's also important to keep in mind here is that to write a good novel or story, there has to be some sort of tension. The character has to be going through something, whether they want to, they're going through an external circumstance where they have to fight off a dragon or they have to save the princess or whatever, or they're going through something internal, something emotional or psychological. There's obstacles that the character faces to get what they want or get themselves out of this situation that they're in. That is pretty much the vast majority of stories. And once you understand these conventions, these story arcs or structures, as Kurt Vonnegut displays here and discusses in a lot of his work. And by the way, I recommend watching a YouTube video uh, where he pretty much goes over this very chart. I highly recommend it. He's just hilarious. I absolutely love his, his videos and his, uh, his lectures are just great. But you can see here that most stories follow this, this type of structure where the character goes through tension and obstacles to get what they want. Okay, so now we've gone over story structure and we are inspired and we have somewhat of a good idea of what kind of story we want to write. Now we have to get our hands dirty and actually start organizing our thoughts so that we can hit the pedal to the metal and write this bad boy and get this novel down on the page itself. So this is a part of the process where every writer is a little bit different. There's some writers that are very meticulous note takers. They'll write pages and pages of notes, gain this story down to the very last detail. Uh, before they start actually working on their novel. Other writers are different. They maybe, you know, they write in such a way where they kind of fly off the cuff and write and just see where the story goes, which that's more along the lines of how I write. I'm not as meticulous of a note taker as I should be, but that's my writing process. And that's something that you have to discover within yourself. And, and that's where you know, a lot of trial and error comes in as far as how you want to prepare yourself and organize your thoughts to begin writing your novel. But, uh, to write our novel in 30 days, this is a very simple but very effective strategy to get you there. And you can apply this to almost any task you're trying to complete because oftentimes what happens is that many of us tend to be overly analytical. And this happens to a lot of writers, i.e. writer's block, where we second guess our ideas and we just aren't willing to take action on them because of self-limiting beliefs that we have about ourselves and our abilities. In this exercise, shuts off that analytical brain, at least for a period of time. So this is what we're going to do. You're going to be in your office or space where there's very little distraction. That means you want to put your cell phone away in another room and it's just you and your laptop. Okay. And that white screen there, and you're going to set a timer on your computer for about 15 minutes. You can try five minutes in the beginning if you like, and then you can work your way up to 15. I like 15 minutes, or if you want to be very brave, try 25 minutes. That's up to you, but you're going to set this timer for say 15 minutes. And within that time frame, you're going to write as much as you can without stopping. Okay. 
I'm going to say that again. You're going to write as much as you can without stopping within those 15 minutes. And again, what this does is it shuts off the analytical part of the brain. When we get to, into this stream of consciousness or in this flow state, where we become so immersed in what it is that we're doing, we forget about everything else. And in this process, you will be shocked at what it is that you'll come up with during this exercise. Because when we're no longer analytical uh, about our ideas, we, we start to use these higher mental faculties that are found in our subconscious mind where our long-term memories and creative abilities and imagination resides. And we may have these ideas laying dormant in our subconscious we never even discovered or realized before. So when you play around with this and you just start going and you start writing without thinking so much, you just go, you'll be shocked at what you'll come up with. And also, it'll force you to acquire a little bit of discipline where you can actually knock out a couple of pages every day and within just those 15 minutes because you're not stopping and going. You're just, you're just writing as much as you can within those 15 minutes. And again, don't worry about if it doesn't make much sense at first because you can always go back and change it. But if you do this enough times, you do this every single day, if you commit to at least doing this 15, 20 minutes or writing just two pages a day, which if you do this exercise, it's very doable, you can have a finished, or at least a first draft for that matter, within 30 days. And you may be thinking, well, I may, what if I only come up with say maybe 100 something pages? That's not very long for a novel. Well, if you look at, for example, The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway, it's only a little over 100 pages. I mean, it's not that long of a book, and it's considered one of the greatest novels of all time. So don't worry about the page length. Focus on what resonates with you and let the story take on a life of its own. When you get into this state of flow, when you're so immersed in what you're doing through this exercise, you'll be shocked at what you'll come up with. And the story is going to take on a life of its own. And that's when you're really going to get in that groove. And you want to get into that flow state as much as possible in this novel writing process. And this exercise is going to help you there. And with some of the information that I provided you, understanding story structure and working on what or working with what inspires you to write this novel you're going to get there within 30 days and after 30 days you're going to have a full-length novel in your hands and that's something that you can be very proud of even if you decide not to publish it it's something that you can be proud of and it's a skill you can develop that you can use for yourself whether if you want to be an aspiring author an entrepreneur or in any other space where you need to communicate to an audience. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Again, make sure you hit the subscribe button uh, to watch all my lectures and also shameless plug. I know I have a link to my Amazon page. If you want to check out all my books, you can do that as well. I certainly would appreciate it. And I will see you next class. Take care, guys. Peace.